football on Off The Ball. With Sky. Watch every single live Premier League game this season on Sky Sports, BT Sport and Premier Sports. I'm prepared to end it I can. Well, do it then. Come again. Do it then. What about your start to the game? I was, it wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> Why should there be an honest answer be a mistake? How can a modern day manager not have a mobile phone? Why should he? Oh. Welcome along to Thursday's football show. It is Nathan with you this evening. Uh, we are going to be talking about the WSL in a little while. And obviously it was a big weekend of Premier League coverage coming your way on Off the Ball over the next few days. Uh, John will be here with the lads on Saturday. And then two live games on Sunday. Leeds and Manchester United go at it again on Sunday afternoon at Ellen Road. Richie McCormick and Kenny Cunningham will talk you through that one. And then myself and Brian Kerr will bring you all the action from the Etihad Stadium as Manchester City take on Aston Villa. John Giles is on the line. Evening, John. Good Nathan. Uh, so at two, two Manchester United, Leeds United, John Giles derbies in the space of uh, four days. And it's a managerless Leeds United who are going into these games after Jesse Marsh was fired on Monday following the defeat against Nottingham Forest. No wins in seven games for Jesse Marsh, only outside the relegation zone on goal difference at that stage, spent a lot of money. So understandable in lots of ways why they decided they had to make this decision. At the same time, it did feel as though Leeds were starting to play better under Marsh. Well, yeah, it, it's unfortunately, it's, it goes back to results, uh, Nathan. You know, I think the board were... Uh, getting a bit, obviously getting a bit uh, worried about the situation. Um, I thought at Forest where they were beaten one nil, they were a bit unlucky. Um, but I think they look back at the, the previous record. Actually, if, over the year, Nathan, I think at what is he won seven matches. Mm. You know, like, and I think he's been saying, "Oh yeah, we're coming good, we're coming good, coming good," and. Uh, like I think it went too long. They had to. They felt that they had to do something. Uh, the directors or the owners in 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 the club. Um, but uh, you know, the, and funny enough, I I don't think that the crowd, the Leeds crowd, really took to him, Nathan. You know, I think he made a big mistake early on when he came in. He did a, an interview, uh, and he was very very critical of Mr. Bielsa who was loved by the Leeds United fans. Mm. And I think that didn't do him any good whatsoever, Nathan. I don't think the Leeds fans really, really took to Jesse March. Yeah, the criticism and that, of Bielsa and was the interview was, 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 I think he made a mistake there. Mm. It was, I, I did hear the interview, I read the interview, and it wasn't good. Uh, you know, he said that, you know, as soon as he came in, he saw the players' faces and knew, knew they'd been overtrained. Uh, and that's what was leading to the injuries and various things like that. Whereas he mightn't have realised, but uh, he also was loved by the Leeds fans. And I don't think they, 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 they didn't like that, and I don't think they'd forgotten about it. He hasn't been helped by injuries to Patrick Bamford, who has played very little football, didn't look really fit when he was playing at the weekend. Uh, an injury to Rodrigo, who was their top scorer this season, who wasn't available at the weekend. They sold Calvin Phillips, Rafinha. They've brought in a, a huge amount of players. There's been a massive turnover. I do just wonder with the fact that it felt as though, and listen, I'm where you're getting carried away in terms of the quality of the performances because it wasn't as if they uh, played Nottingham Forest off the park. It does feel like there's a, quite a risk to this decision to get rid of him right now, considering how many of the players they brought in feel like they're there or they're his type of players. Yeah. Uh, I, I found it odd. I thought they would leave him a few more games, uh, Nathan, to be honest. I thought they were unlucky uh, against uh, Forrest at the weekend. And the players that they brought in, I don't know whether he's brought them in or not, uh, seem to be good players. You know, I think they've improved the staff on it. As you say Bamford is, is a big loss to them. And that Bamford at his best would be a huge plus uh, to Leeds. There's no doubt about that. Um so, like, it's just at the stage where I think, you know, the owners or whoever's involved in it, well, probably most, mostly the owners, uh, do they leave it or do they, ha- do they have to make a change there? Now, I mean, I think on, on the, the fact that Forrest beat them uh, didn't do any good. And it, it hasn't, I think they haven't won for seven matches, Nathan. So, 
Like it's getting a dodgy time. Mm. Uh, but I thought the, 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 the Forest match, I thought they were unlucky in that particular match. And uh, it, it it just went against them a little bit. But uh, it's... Um, it's 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 a it's funny decision to make. I I think I would have left him a little bit longer, Nathan. Despite the fact that you know I, I wasn't pleased with his his, his remarks at the time against uh, uh, Bielsa. Mm. Uh, it did feel against Forrest, and I think one of the big criticisms from the supporters afterwards was that it was very one dimensional. That basically their plan was give the ball to Wilfried Nanto out on the left hand side, and when that stopped working, when Forrest brought on Serge Aurier and they got to grips with him. They didn't really have a plan B. No, well, well, some of the plans I've heard from them, I couldn't. Un- a lot of them I couldn't understand at all. I don't. Maybe it was the American way of talking about the game, uh, but I could. A lot of it. Now I must be honest. I couldn't understand what he was on about. I thought it was very, very complicated what he was saying, uh, and I certainly didn't understand it. A lot of what he said about the games that they played or lost are on the game generally. Uh, we discussed last week the sort of half a dozen teams who were in that relegation scrap. It's very difficult to predict the bottom three because clubs do change manager. And we saw at Everton last week, an instant bounce. They come in and they beat the league leaders with Sean Dyche coming in. There's been a lot of lames linked with Leeds and it seems quite a few of the contenders may have already turned down the chance to go to the club. Is there a manager out there that you've seen you think is a good fit? I must say I haven't, Nathan, because they're they're they're, they're looking a lot at uh, foreign managers that mm. I, I I wouldn't even know at the moment. Um, you know, Dice is 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 gone to Everton, which I think is a good a good um, thing for for Everton. I think we spoke about it last week. I think Dice was was very very badly done by at uh, at at, um, at Burnley. Burnley. You know, he, he was known as a, 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 a get it up the field early stuff, but he he did he did a great job for about five or six years. I mean, Burnley had he spent any money? They were a selling club. Uh, I never agreed with the fact that they were a, 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 a booted up the pitch team, and you could see by the performance last week. Now, that obviously, Everton have got to keep it up, but it was a very good performance against the top team in the country at the moment, Arsenal, and uh, I think he'll do a really good job there. I think. Had he gone to Leeds, I think he would have done a really good job at Leeds. But they lost him. They did. They know he was there. he was available, but they seem to be uh, in for a foreign manager at the moment. Leeds do. Mm. It's unbelievable the job that Sean Dyche was able to do in the space of three or four days, and even that didn't come without a sort of criticism and a looking down on his work that he had players doing bleep tests and doing a lot more running and training and it's very old fashioned English style yeah like that Everton side we have not seen under Frank Lampard they were totally transformed in their organisation every player looked as though they had stepped up a level instantly you were looking at the Everton team and thinking like there's quality in that group that we just thought wasn't there like that is like that is the mark of a manager that you can go in and within the space of 48, 72 hours transform a club. Yeah. Well, they've, they've got to continue, uh, Nathan, as we know. I mean, that's a start for it. Mm. And I just had read a thing the other day where four or five of the managers that uh, have come to Everton in recent times, they all won their first match. Uh, so, but I think Dyche has a good CV at Burnley. I mean, he didn't have any money or anything. They mm. had to play in a certain way. But they certainly gave Arsenal a bit of a surprise. I think that, I think uh, Arteta was surprised at the, 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 the spirit that they had because Arsenal didn't really match them in, in that particular, in the game. So, you know, Everton deserved to win to win the game. So, I think he's, he started off in the right way and uh, he, has, he has a good experience behind him at Burnley and all the stuff that he did there. He's an experienced manager and he knows it, what he, exactly what he wants, I think, from the players. So I'd be, su- I'd be surprised if they don't pick up. That's Everton. Arsenal are still five points clear with a game in hand after City were beaten by Spurs at the weekend. Mm. The defeat to Everton, the manner of it, and you go back to the draw against Newcastle. So Arsenal, and the way teams approach them, is probably going to change over the next 17, 18 matches. They've gone from in the hunter to the hunted, that teams are sitting very, getting very defensive, getting very physical with them. Do Arsenal look like they're prepared for that? Do they have a, a second style of play? Do they, do they need a second style if, 
if the no, way they're I, trying I to do it works? No, I think they'll do what, they, what, they, what they've done, uh, which is to win the matches and get on top of the table, Nathan. I think Everton probably gave them a surprise with the, the, their approach to the game, and it was their first match and uh, playing at home. But I, no, I think I think Arsenal will get over. I think there's, they're, 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 if I was putting a few bob on, on them winning the league, I think I'd, put it, I'd still put it on Arsenal. Mm. Uh, Manchester City then beaten for the fourth time uh, this season and say missed out on the opportunity to close the gap mm. and like it feels like they always lose at Spurs in the exact same way where Spurs are happy to go at them on the counter attack Harry Kane will take a chance and they'll come away with the win there's a huge amount of controversy around Manchester City this week and the FA charges that they're facing and who knows that how that will play out in terms of stripping them of titles or deducting of points or maybe even as far as relegating them over the coming seasons. It might take a while to play out. It's probably overshadowed what's going on on the pitch at the moment at Manchester City and the struggles for Pep Guardiola. Like the team selection again last weekend. Kevin De Bruyne left on the bench. Phil Foden is... a isn't in the squad he hasn't played a huge amount over the past three or four months anyways it does feel as though Guardiola's in a very confused state is what he wants from his team at the moment is that fair enough? Um, well it's surprising that he's making the changes that he's doing at the moment uh, I mean he's always made changes uh, Nathan but I think I, I, I mean he's, he's done brilliantly for City as we know but I think it gets too complicated particularly in recent times as you say, the players that he left on the bench in what was going to be a very difficult match for him. And he's got this young man, Rico, Rico Lewis. Rico Lewis, yeah. Yeah, no, he, if you look where he plays, he's actually down as a fullback. But he plays all his time in midfield. No, it's, it's something that Pep seems to want to do. Like, in other words, I'll try this, I'll try Nobody else has tried it, I've tried it. And, and it, it, it's just too complicated, in my opinion. Now, he's been a great manager for City, but, uh, you know, like you, you've, you've got to try and keep it as simple as you possibly can. And, and, and doing that, in my opinion, is playing your best players in, in, in the best positions. Uh, but as you said, the, the team he turned out with the players on the bench and this young kid, he's a, he's a, I think he's a very good midfield player. But he's not a left back. And if you look back on the goal on it, he was caught uh, in possession on the edge of the box. But he was on the, the central edge of the box. And the ball was, was laid out to to Harry Kane in a position, in my opinion, where the left back should be. So I just find I just find him odd at times, Pep. I know he's been a great manager, he's won an awful, awful lot of trophies. But uh, you know, the, the, there are managers in the game, in the past game, that get complicated, try this, try that, try the other. And I think he, he, I think he's at that stage now. And it doesn't make sense in my, in my opinion it doesn't make sense what he's doing. And in a, in a time like that when results are going against City, it, it feels with Pep that he'll keep experimenting, he'll keep trying to do something different. Is that where actually as a manager you need to go back to basics? Well, definitely. I don't think you should ever leave basics, Nathan. It's, it's not that complicated. In my opinion, keep it as simple as you possibly can. Defend when you have to, attack when you can. You know, you don't need, uh, like I've never seen this before in any other other team uh, where you have a left back and he's only, he's only a young lad playing in the midfield and expect to be able to fend when they're under pressure. It, it just doesn't happen. They keep it simple because always in the, when I was playing anyway, keep it simple. You know, play your best players in your best position. But I, I think... Pep has been like that a little bit all all over his career, but more I think more so now than I ever than I've ever seen him before. So Harry Kane got the goal, two hundred sixty seventh goal for Tottenham. I'll uh, ah, yeah. ask you the question you don't want to answer: Is uh, Harry Kane a greater striker than Jimmy Greaves? I don't think so, Nathan. First of all, very few strikers are the same. You know, they're all they all have their own qualities and I've never seen two the same uh, but what they didn't say in the, in the stats Nathan uh, like he, he overtook Jimmy Greaves for Spurs right but Jimmy Greaves scored 100 goals for Chelsea before he went to Spurs mm. More, you know, so Harry, Harry would, be way, would be way behind on goals scored in, and these were all in the Premiership uh, well the first division at that particular time um, 
But I must say, I, I, I think Harry Kane is world class and what he does. I mean, in, in, in relation to Jimmy, Jimmy was a goal scorer, out and out. He was a genius. I played against him quite a lot. Absolute genius, goal scorer. But Jimmy didn't make many goals, Nathan. He scored a lot of goals. He didn't make many goals. Whereas Harry Kane scores a lot of goals, and he also makes a lot of goals. But you can never compare the two, the two strikers. You know, they're, they're, they're all different and great in their own ways. But if I, was, if I was playing in a team now, one of the top teams, if I asked, well, would you take Harry Kane or Jimmy Greaves? I'd take Jimmy Greaves. Yeah, his, uh, his Chelsea record, not really relevant to uh, what Tottenham were celebrating, where he scored 22 goals, 32 goals, 29 goals, and 41 goals in his four seasons. Just league goals for Chelsea. Mm-hmm before he went off to AC Milan for half a season. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But, I mean, they're, they're talking, they're been, Harry's done great. He's beaten Jimmy Greaves' record at Spurs. Mm. But Harry didn't play for anybody else. Well, it's the point I'm making. Jimmy, Jimmy Greaves scored 100 before he came to Spurs and then scored 266. Now, I, I'm not taking anything away. I'm a great admirer of, of Harry Kane. I think he's, he has reached world class. I think he's done a great job for, for Spurs and will continue to do so. Uh but in, on, 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 Greaves and Harry Kane are nowhere alike in the way they play and where they play, Nathan. Mm. So I'm only saying that if, if I was play, playing and I had a pick of picking them, picking one or the other for goal scoring, I'd pick Jimmy Greaves. But but Harry Kane, I think Harry, I have great admiration for Harry Kane. Uh, for 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 Kane, Harry Kane is brilliant. He's done a brilliant job. But Greaves was even more exceptional. Than, mm. than than Harry Harry Kane, in my opinion. Uh, Harry Kane, the talk is always of a potential move to go and follow the trophies, and maybe the move to Manchester City is gone. There's talk that maybe Manchester United might make a move again during the summer. Him scoring goals in a title run in when you're playing in big games where it's all on the line, he hasn't had to experience that a huge amount at Tottenham. Does he need that to, to elevate himself to another level? No, I, I, I think you do it anyway, Nathan. I mean, first of all, I mean, he hasn't played with the best of teams mm. at sports. I mean, if he, if he was in, uh, you know, the, the City team, in my opinion, he'd, he'd score a lot of goals. Or, or, or Arsenal, any of the teams that are winning, uh, I think he, he, would score, he would score even more goals. But what he's doing at Spurs, uh, as we know, he, 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 he seemed, well, he wanted to go. And he did, they wouldn't let him go, which was fair enough. They're entitled to do that. I, if, I, if I was the, the owner, I wouldn't let him go either. But I think wherever he went, I think he would score goals. Uh, Jurgen Klopp doesn't have the answer, so I don't know if you do. Uh, what the hell is going on with Liverpool? I don't know. Uh, I mean, Klopp was asked himself after the match, and he said, I don't know. <laughs> How so worrying he, is that, that he would admit that, that he can't see either during the 90 minutes or on the training ground during the week where the problem starts? Um, I don't know. But, but, I mean, I, when Klopp was at, uh, when he went to versus Liverpool, I probably unkindly said he was a one-trick pony with a great trick. Right? Mm. Because he, I, I think he gets the players out, go, 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 which is, which is, which is great. But like they're playing a high lion in that now, and I, and I think he's being honest to say I don't know. Now there's very few managers that I came across, top managers, who didn't know what was wrong. To put it right, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Right? Well, that would also suggest that there's there's no sign of this turning around quickly. I don't think it will. I don't. You, 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 we're, we're all guessing mm. in it. You know, it, it could well be did the Salah situation where he got a big increase in, in his wages mean something? I, I know from being a player, uh, you know, you talk about morale. Morale is very hard to, 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 to make or guess, if that's the right word, Nathan. And it's so easily lost. Now, if you, I could only go back in my time at, at, at Leeds. We were very, very close lads, working well together for, for years. But if I'd known, say, for, at the time, and, and I don't think it happened, that Billy Bremner got a big increase, and I didn't, or Norman Hunt, Hunter didn't, and all the, all the top players we'd have, I think there could be trouble there, Nathan. I wouldn't have liked it. 
you know, I wouldn't show up. I'd, I'd, I'd say, John, if you found out now that Billy Bremner had got a pair of eyes, you probably wouldn't be happy about it. <laughs> well, it'd be a bit too late. Because, <laughs> but I, 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 I don't. I, I never. Certainly, with Sal, now, it's been in the paper that he's, he's got an increase. Mm. He's definitely got an increase, Nathan. We know that. That's the thing. All the Liverpool players would know that. And morale is very, very hard to build, and it can be, it, it can be gone like the wind. If something like this can happen, yeah, you know, like I go back and I might have said it on, on your program before. At Leeds, when when Don left to go and Brian Clough came in, right, that was after I was there eleven years at that time, and all the other lads were there, some of them before me. We were a tight tight grip. We just won the league, and Brian Clough came in with his attitude in that. After forty four days, he was gone, and we were gone. We just won the league. The spirit had gone. He created, he, 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 what he did was he, he picked out two, two individuals uh, in the team that Don Revy would have kept under close close control. And that was um, Alan Clark and Gordon McQueen. Right? He lauded them in front of us, in front of all the players, Norman Hunter, myself, Paul Reaney, and all these players. And he built up a resentment yeah, there's a resentment in it, you know, and also telling us that you throw your medals in the bin over there, and Eddie Gray, you shouldn't have played. All this carry on. This was 44 days, but when he went, we were gone. We split up. We were split up, Nathan. After 44 days, and this is after 11 years, but we had the team spirited, and we were all played for each other and all that. We were gone. But John, we were gone. if you were if you were in the dressing room and if you'd lost a couple of games, and the manager came out and said they don't know what the problem is. Would you not be a bit worried as a player? I would. I would. Because, like, a manager's a manager. A manager should know everything about the players, why they're doing, what, why we're not doing well, why and put it right. If you don't know what's wrong, Nathan, you can't put it right. And I've never met one of the great managers, and, I, and I, there was no doubt Klopp has done a great job for Liverpool over the period of time that he's there, the trophies he's won. It's brilliant. But that, that's gone. Now you have to worry. The thing about football is the now. What's happening now? And what he did say last week, and what people were asking the newspaper about what's wrong, he says, I don't know. Mm. And I don't think he's kidding when he says that. I don't think he, I don't think he does actually see what's going. In other words, he's, he's always been a go, 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 go manager with all the players, and that's what they did. But they're obviously not doing that at the moment. <laughs> we get, we're, we're, I'm guessing... First of all, there's, there's talk about the club being sold. There's talking about Salah getting an increase in his contract over everybody else. I mean, there are two issues that can st- stop the team spirit that you should be having, that yeah. they've had, that they've definitely had. There's no doubt about that. Is it there? It doesn't look like it's there. Can he tell us what's wrong? He doesn't know. It's big trouble for Liverpool. Uh- Manchester United last night we, we touched on the fact they drew at Leeds United uh, no Casemiro last night he's going to miss the game on Sunday as well he's going to miss the following match he also missed the Arsenal game a few weeks ago after receiving a fifth booking obviously this one was a result of the red card at the weekend uh, a big frustration considering how important he's become so quickly for Manchester United it was a bit a bit silly to put it mildly what he did at the weekend yeah, I didn't I didn't um, is that is the is that the one where he was choking yeah. the guy? Yes, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Well, obviously there was, there was people making a, a, a claim because everybody was doing it, you know? Yeah. But that just, I mean, he was actually choking the guy. There was no doubt. It, was, it had to be a red card. Uh, like, you, you, shouldn't, you, you shouldn't get involved in that, Nathan, you know? Mm. It, 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 like, then, then I didn't see the other incident where he got, he got uh, sent off as well. I didn't see that. Well, he just got he got he got booked against the Palace a few weeks ago in another game, and it was his oh, yes, fifth, yes, so he ended yes. up being suspended. It was sort of a stupid tackle as well near yeah. the end of the game. Yeah, well, you can't afford to do any. You can't do. I mean, they've got VAR now, and it's just all the the, the the things we see, Nathan. That you, you know, one time in my day, you might have got away with certain things, but you can't get away with anything now. And it's a big, huge loss for them at a time now where it's vital for the for them to. Uh, I mean, it wasn't on the telly yet last night. I don't know how. Yeah. I know Leeds went two up, and they they came back and got two two. But I don't know. I don't know how the game the game went. But you, you can't you can't afford any slip ups that you can avoid in in the situation that Manchester United in when they're going for the for the league and that. 
Uh, when you look at your over 500 games for Leeds, if there was VAR back then, how many red cards do you think you would have had? Um, not many, Nathan, because grievous bodily harm <laughs> would get you, maybe get you a yellow card. <laughs> <laughs> you know that was the, that that was the time that was in it, you know. Uh, uh, and, and to be honest, now I did very very little stupid things when I was when it, when when I, when I was getting a bit of stick myself. Everybody got a bit of stick, especially in the position I was in, because you, you I was a midfield player, supposed to be a creative player. You're 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 a target, Nathan. Yeah. But but you get players got away with murder. I mean, I had an incident Eddie McCready at at, uh, at uh, Chelsea, Stamford Bridge, and uh, I was I was playing on on I was in the right wing, passed it inside, and Norman Hunter was getting a shot in when Eddie McCready tackled me, carried off. I was knee ligaments done. You got your revenge. I got me. I got me revenge, uh, and a match in Leeds. The ball was gone out of play, and Eddie and he was a good player, but he but he could really dish it out. And I, I got, he was made for me, and I, I got him. I, we're walking off the pitch. He said, what's that all about? I said, well, that's for you doing me at uh, Stamford Bridge. He said, that's seven years ago. <laughs> I said, but I had to wait all that time, Eddie. Because <laughs> that's what you had to do. I mean, I was, I was, I was as bad as anybody else, but I was, I was a target, you know. You, when you're uh, supposed to be a creative midfield player, you're in trouble. There was there was no protection from the referees, Nathan. And I'd 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 I'd, uh, I'd been done before that early on. But after the McCready incident, I thought, well, never again. You know, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Um. Uh, before you go, there's a documentary on on Monday night about Liam Brady that's been uh, quite a while in the works, and I think a lot of people are really looking forward to seeing it. There's a such affection for Liam, uh, particularly, I think, amongst a certain generation of, of Irish football fans for his brilliance in an Ireland jersey, but also yeah. for him being such a, a trailblazer at Arsenal, but then what he achieved when he went to Italy with Juventus yeah. and Samadori and, and Inter Milan. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure if you're involved in the documentary, but y- your first memories of, of Liam Brady, what are they? Uh, well, first of all, I'm not in the documentary that, that I know of anyway. I haven't, I haven't done anything for it. Uh, but I first saw Liam, I was... Uh, at Leeds at the time, I think it was coming towards the end of the season. Uh, I wasn't playing in the match at Leeds, and Liam had just come into the team. I'd never seen him play before. I think he was only about 18 at the time, and he was absolutely brilliant. And I was player manager to, of, the, of the Irish team, and we were going on a tour of South America at the end of the season. And uh, I, I, I picked him for to go on the tour. But well, Bertie Mee was the manager. He never came back to me, and Liam never never found out about it himself, you know. But he, he, Liam, and then just shortly after that, he, he, he played. In, I picked him to play in the team. Uh, his first international, again, I think it was against the USSR, yeah. uh, where we had a, a big win, and it was it was natural to him to play in the international team. I had no, no problem about picking anyone. I was only young for myself when I got into And they used to say, oh, international football is different to, you know, league football. How can it be? I never believed that. How can it's a game of football? And Liam took to it like a duck to water, as they say. Got on the ball. Liam was an absolute brilliant player. You know, he was, he was, he was I would call him a, a beautiful player, which is not usually an expression of him. Like his balance on the ball, his control of the ball, especially getting it on his left foot, beating a player, going past it, just beautiful to watch. Apart from the 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 the, 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 the manner in which he did it, and and doing the right things at the right time, Liam was Liam was a natural, I'd say, from the time he was four or five years of age. Mm. And when he got into in the international team, uh, he was just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. No nerves, no nothing. Great players know what they can do. Now, they don't get nervous about anything. You get, you get a bit nervous before the match. But he was, he was a beautiful player. And uh, he was a great player for Ireland and Arsenal. And he, he, he was just a natural, gifted individual. Good temperament. Uh, didn't get too nervous. Never got nervous about anything, really, that I saw in the game. She would give him the ball in tight areas, beat players, score goals, especially on the left side, on his left foot. He was he was a beautiful player to watch, uh, and uh, he was 
he was he, he, for me he was one of the favourite players I ever played with in football. Why was he a good teammate? Well, he played for the team, Nathan. He wasn't a show off. The team didn't have to show off. What he did was absolutely brilliant. And you could watch him all day playing. He's on the ball. He could do certain things. Come inside, beat players. Uh, so he never. He, he was a good team player. I mean, I wouldn't be talking about him the way I'm talking about him now if he wasn't a team player. Mm. Don't I don't believe in not not players not being a team player. That's what it's all about. But Liam had the ability and the temperament and the knowledge and and the intelligence to do what was best for the team. Always did. Never showed off, Liam didn't have to show off. What he was doing was, was absolutely brilliant and everybody loved watching him play because uh, some players are really top-class players, Nathan, and, and they're not that good to watch, but they're effective. But Liam was, was brilliant to watch. I was playing with him. I, was, I loved watching him play and what he did, which was effective. It wasn't doing tricks or anything. He was just doing, doing what was, was supposed to be done. His temperament was good, good approach to the game, top-notch. I'd say the, I'd say the, the the documentary would be brilliant. Yeah, it's interesting you say he he didn't show off because I I'm too young to remember watching Liam Brady play and uh, my first memory is of watching 101 great goals and the excitement in the house when an Irish player would pop up and Liam Brady would always have five or six goals in these compilations and he was such a brilliantly creative player it looked as though that was showing off because he would score these exquisite chips and outside of the left foot <laughs> and the thing that, that always stood out for me was he always seemed to play with his, with his head up that yeah. the ball was just stuck to his toe but he never had to look down at it he could dribble no. with it he could take the shots but he, he, he could almost just move his neck whatever way he wanted and keep his but head he, up he'd know where he was before mm. the ball came to him that's what, what great players do in, and they call, I would call it positional sense they get into positions that when they receive the ball uh, it looks like there's nobody near them. I've, I've played with poor players where after, like what happens with the great players, after their first touch, they've more room than they had before they touched it. And their second touch, second touch gives them even more room. Now what happens with bad players is that the more they touch the ball, the less room they have, Nathan. You know, it's a gift in itself, to, first of all, to be in the right position. And the second gift is, is to have the control See, what happens with great players like Liam, when the ball is coming to him, he doesn't have to think how he's going to control the ball. Right? So you can only think one thing at a time. So the fact that you don't have to think that, you can think of something else. Mm. Where am I going to put it? You know, with great players, no, before the ball comes to them, they know where the ball is going. If they say Liam Brady's on the left-hand side and the right winger is free, Liam would know before the ball came to him that that's the ball. Now, the second thing he has to have is make the room to do it. The easiest part is distributing the ball, which could be 40 yards. No problem in that, uh, Nathan. It's making the room, getting the room, controlling the ball, and they'd be able to look up without having to worry about controlling the ball. Because a lot of players, particularly defenders, when the ball's come, they're worrying, am I going to control it? Am I not going to control it? So that's all they're thinking about. Whereas Liam Brady doesn't be thinking about it. He knows he's going to control the ball. So his mind is elsewhere to where am I going to put it. So he can have a look up and look around the pitch. Where's the most dangerous ball? If the right winger's on his own and it's in Liam's position, generally speaking, that would be the ball. But somebody of the forward might be going through, and like in the international team, it might be Don Gibbons going through. He'd have that ball in his mind before he even got it, while it was on his way. Yes. Only because his control was so good. Mm. You obviously spent many, many hours uh, sitting beside each other on an RTE panel. Would he have stayed close in the in-between years? So when, when he went off to Juventus and, and made that huge move and became such a, a massive part of a brilliant Juventus team, would you, have, would you have been in touch then? Would you have spoken a lot about football? Yeah, I would have spoken to him at the time he was moving. It was a big move for, for, for Liam at that particular time. And uh, uh, I think at that time, there, was, there wasn't a freedom of contract the way there is today, Nathan. And I think he, 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 he wanted to move. And I think one of the, the main people at uh, Arsenal and the boardroom, one of the big directors, said, you know, what, what are you on about? You know, at that time they wanted them to sign. Uh, that's it. When they were a certain age, Nathan, there, there would be uh, a 
thing on your contract that you could leave the club when your contract was up for for X amount. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And Liam, the contract was running out and he was in the first team. And they were mad at Arsenal for them to sign a new contract. And he knew that time that the Italian club were interested in, in him, but they wanted him to sign him because they were sort of bullying him a little bit. And luckily enough, I had a very, very good friend, and I was quite close with Liam at that time. Uh, I had a very, very good friend who was very good to me, Ronnie Team, and uh, he was a top class solicitor in, in uh, Leeds. And luckily enough, I, was, I, I still was in contact with him when I left uh, Leeds. And uh, I put Liam in contact with Ronnie. And Ronnie looked after him from there right so he pulled it all together because it was a big transfer fee as well I think they paid £500,000 at a time when Italian transfers were just opening up to foreign players coming in but also it was still quite unusual for, for English players to go to Italy and be a success it was probably John oh, yeah. Charles well, Liam, was, was, Liam was a great player he could English play anywhere Irish players, but players I think what English happened league. with, the, with, the, with the, 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 the money situation he didn't sign the new contract mm. Nathan so the contract he was on, if a club played X amount, the likes of Arsenal wouldn't have any control over it. They had to let him go. Right. That's why they were putting a bit of pressure on him to sign the new contract so that the, the fee would be much bigger. And were you advising him to go to Juventus? No. No, well, funny enough, uh, he, he, when I was speaking to him at the time, he, he was, I think he was going to go to Germany. And I said, why, why do you want to go to Germany? He said, well, he said, I think the Italians, he said, they mark you very closely. It's a very close marking situation. And funny enough, Nathan, I found playing against the Italian teams, they were very, very close marking against the forwards, you know, the strikers. Mm. Oh, they'd be, they were really, really tight. But they didn't come tight on you in midfield. Strange thought, may seem. I'd played against a few Italian teams at that time. Right, so you'd have a they, bit of time on the ball. Yeah. Like they had a reputation for being close markers, but they were close markers of the strikers, and still are when you see them. Yeah. But if you see them in midfield, actually, they, they let you play. And I was lucky enough; I was able to say, to "Liam, that's not that's not the case." Actually, you get closer marked in Germany than you will in in, in Italy. So I was all not that I I, I didn't well, I wasn't pushing Liam anywhere. I was only giving him my opinion yeah. on it. I said, "If I were, if I were you," I said. If I was in the situation, I said, I would definitely be going to Italy instead of Germany. I'd say and, he was and, glad and he you gave him that advice. Sorry? I'd say he was glad you gave him that advice the way it worked out. Well, the way it worked out, yeah, but he didn't know at the time. Liam was very young at, 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 uh, when mm-hmm. he was going, to, going abroad, uh, Nathan. You know, I think he was, what was he, only 21 or so? Yeah, maybe yeah, a little bit older, maybe about 23 when he went to... Yeah, well, he was, you know, he was quite young to do it. But Liam was, Liam was always a classy classy player I mean if I was the, if I was an Italian team I'd want I'd want him in any team uh, so he was I think he was made for it you know he'd, he'd, be, a, he'd be a brilliant player anywhere anywhere and, and and a great temperament and never lost control of himself never got big headed always always lame uh, you know he was just one of, one of the lads Dublin lad uh Never, never lost, never lost the, the, his head in any way whatsoever. He was, he was a credit to, uh, he was a credit to the game, a credit, a credit to himself. Yeah, uh, really looking forward to seeing that documentary on Monday night. Yeah, so am I. <laughs> uh, well, we might chat to you a bit more about it once we, we, we we'll see if you get you get a mention at some stage. There's obviously uh, no backstage from the late nights after the RTE panel or anything. You hope? I don't think so, uh, Nathan, because we made a pact. We never talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding when I say that. <laughs> yeah, right. You won't want to read Dumpy's next book, book I'll tell you. Uh, John, great stuff as always. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Nathan. John, John, there then, yeah. every bye, Thursday. Bye. If you missed any of that, you can listen back to the podcast in full. And all our football coverage is brought to you by Sky. Watch all the football you love, including the biggest Premier League games every weekend, live on Sky. Football on Off The Ball With Sky Don't miss West Ham versus Chelsea This Saturday Live only on BT Sport This is News Talk